Osceola County, my name is Keith Carson. I'm one of your circuit judges. Today is initial appearances. At initial appearances, my job is to make a determination as to whether there's probable cause for your arrest, which has already happened. We're going to talk about uh, bond conditions uh, that may get you back to your lives while the case is pending, uh, if I'm able to consider bond in your case. And the last thing we'll talk about is getting an attorney on board for you to represent your interests. First case that I have is Jonathan Abreu. Approaching your honor. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Sir, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery, domestic violence related. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. You're going to be granted a bond in the amount of $250 plus pre-trial release conditions. Who's our pre-trial release officer today? Officer Cadhill on the top of the PTR. I can barely hear you. Is that microphone on? <coughs> officer Cadhill on behalf of PTR. Good morning, Ms. Hill. Is that, is that better, Your Honor? Yeah, just a little bit, Officer Hill. Thank you. Officer Hill, uh, has there been any contact with the victim? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I spoke with the victim and she's requesting no hostile contact. She states that they do not live together, but they do work together. All right, thank you. I have uh, noticed that uh, pursuant to the uh, pretrial release information sheet, the risk assessment is low. Uh, the court is going to allow no hostile contact between the defendant and uh, the alleged victim. Sir, that means exactly what it sounds like. You're not allowed to get in each other's faces, no swearing, uh, no putting your hands on her, obviously, without her permission. Uh, and this occurred where? At a parking lot? Mm -hmm. All right. You guys are to maintain separate residences. Thank you, Mr. Brave. All right. Thank you, sir. Limeris Crespo Green. Approaching your honor. Thank you. Ms. Crespo Good morning, Green. Good morning. Ma'am, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery, domestic violence. I read the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for that arrest. You're going to be granted a bond in the amount of $250 plus pretrial release conditions. Those conditions being you have no contact with the victim and you not return to the location where this is alleged to have occurred. Looked like that was... I've just got an area deep. Uh, I'm going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender. Mr. Rosario, do you want to ask if they cohabitate? Excuse me, Your Honor. Do you want to ask Miss Crespo Green if uh, if she and the victim live together? Your Honor, I did speak with the victim yes. and they do live together. Yes, Your Honor. Although, Your Honor, they, they do have children in common, can we appoint a third party independent All right. for uh, visitation? Yes. All right. Uh, you may know that you may not live together. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. That'll conclude our hearing. Thanks. Clara Escobedo Salazar. Your Honor, uh, she required the services of a Spanish interpreter. Thank you. All right, thank you. We have a uh, potential witness on uh, Escobedo Salazar, so uh, we're going to come back to her. Okay. Thanks. Angelique Hasley. Approaching your honor. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Is it Hazley or Hasley? Hazley. Good morning, Ms. Hazley. Good morning, sir. 
Ms. Hazley, you were arrested based on an allegation of possessing uh, controlled drugs and possessing drug paraphernalia. I read the charge in the affidavit that you find probable cause for that arrest. The court's going to grant bond in count one in the amount of $1,000, just to count two in the amount of $500. I'm going to take no action on the uh, Orange County case. And I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interests. Yeah. Franny Arlen, Jimenez. You want to uh, sheep on out today? Thank you. Devante Kelly. Approaching your honor, please be informed that Mr. Devante is qualified for a direct PTR. Good morning, Mr. Kelly. Provides probable cause for the allegation that he has a weapon by a convicted felon. There's also a second count of operating on a vehicle with a without a valid driver's license by probable cause. The bond is on that count five hundred dollars. Now, sorry, it's going to be pre-trial release as to that count. The court will release you pre-trial release on count one as well. Possession as a special condition of pre-trial release, you are to possess no weapons or firearms. You are not to drive without a valid driver's license. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Straight PTR. Straight PTR. Your Honor, is the officer of the public defender assigned? I'll appoint the officer of the public defender to represent your interests. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a good day. Your Honor, I Leon, uh, Taritza, Leon yeah. Vasquez. Yeah. Yes, for both. Uh, Your Honor, Ms. Teresa is all, also bonded out today. Thank you. Raul Navarro. Approaching, Your Honor. Morning, Mr. Navarro. Good morning. Mr. Navarro, you were arrested based on an allegation of resisting an officer without violence and giving a false name or ID to a law enforcement officer. I found probable cause for both of those allegations. Bond in count one will be set in the amount of $250. Bond in count two will be set in the amount of $250. I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. Thank you. Thank you. Timothy Shinooski. Approaching, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Shinooski. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Shinooski, you were arrested based on an allegation of DUI. I find probable cause for that arrest. Your bond is set in the amount of $500. I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. Thanks. Thank you. Your Honor, will you be taking any action on the um, cases in the diversion program? Now? Let me take a look. That, that is also a DUI charge. Unfortunately, Mr. Shinooski, you were uh, out. Your case was abated. I suspect you were out on ROR on your previous DUI participating in the Osceola County Diversion Program. 
Court has probable cause. Do you believe that you have committed a new law offense of DUI while on ROR? I'm going to revoke your ROR in that uh, 2020 CT 823. We're going to set no bond in that case, and uh, you're going to have to go in front of your trial judge in misdemeanor court to see if you can convince them that a bond is warranted. Sorry about that, Mr. Sinewski. Right. I'll point the office of the public defender on that case as well. Raymond Smith. Yes, Good morning, Mr. Smith. Good morning. Mr. Smith, you were arrested based on an allegation of violation of a domestic injunction. I've read the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for that allegation. You can be uh, set a bond in the amount of $250 plus pretrial release conditions. As a condition of your release, you are not having contact with the uh, alleged victim in this case, and that is Jessica Powers. Uh, I understand that she wants to have contact with you, but apparently there's a injunction that appears to be still in place out of another state. So at this point, it's no contact. Uh, I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. Mr. Rosario, do they live together? Um, your Honor, I did speak with you last bit. Yes, Your Honor. I'm oh, um, sorry. They do not live together, but they are here on vacation together in which they drove. Um, and the victim was under the understanding that the injunction had expired. Law enforcement pursuant to the charging affidavit indicates that it's still in effect until May 8, 2021, so I can't grant uh, contact. I know that's going to put a some difficulty into getting home, but uh, the order's going to be no contact at this point, so that gets sorted out. And I'll, if I didn't previously appoint the Office of the Public Defender, I'll so, do so now. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks. Sean Smith. Your Honor, he will bring in, in a, he will be here in a couple minutes. He will. All right, thanks. Can we recall Ms. Clara Escobedo? Spanish interpreter required. All right, thank you. Give me just a moment. Good morning, Madam Interpreter. We have an interpreter on the line. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. For the record, Jose Sandra, certified Spanish interpreter, have not been sworn in yet. Good morning, Mr. Sandra. We'll swear you in at this time. Do you swear to translate from Spanish to English, English to Spanish, true in these matters here today? Yes, I do. For the record, Jose Sandra, certified Spanish interpreter. Mr. Sandra, we have Miss Escobedo Salazar. She's at the Osceola County Jail facility. We're also going to have a witness in just a moment. The case number. I don't know if I have a case number for you. I can give you a. Uh, arrest number of 21101-7339. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Escobedo Salazar. Buenos Good dias, morning. Señor Escobedo Salazar. Buenos dias. Good morning. Sir, uh, ma'am, excuse me, you are uh, present before the court based on an allegation of battery domestic violence related. Señora, usted está enfrente de este tribunal con una supuesta alegación de agresión 
física en un entorno de violencia doméstica. I have read the charging affidavit and I do find probable cause for your arrest. He leído el informe policial y el expediente y veo motivo fundado para su arresto. I note that there is a witness present. Uh, tomo nota y que consta en acta que hay un testigo presente. Sir, if you will please raise your right hand and uh, follow the court's instructions. Señor, sería usted tan amable de levantar la mano derecha y de seguir las indicaciones de la, tri la secretaria. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Usted jura decir la verdad, toda la verdad y nada más que la verdad. Sí, señor. Yes, Your Honor. You may put your hand down. Thank you. Baje la mano. Gracias y hable voz alta. Would you please tell me your name? Por favor, señor, dígame su nombre completo para que con Daniel Vargas Rueda. Daniel Vargas Rueda. You are listed in the charging affidavit as the alleged victim in this case. Usted en el informe del expediente se le nota aquí que es usted la supuesta víctima en la causa. I will be considering uh, conditions of bond and contact provisions. Voy a tener en consideración la fianza y establecer los términos de contacto. Do you wish to give me some information regarding those decisions? Así que si usted desea, me puede dar cualquier tipo de información sobre esas decisiones que tomaré brevemente. Sí, eh, fue un malentendido. Eh, la señora Clara Luz es la madre de mis niños y fue un malentendido, pero es una persona muy buena. Y quiero que en este caso nos disculpe por tomar estas molestias. Your Honor, it was all just a big misunderstanding. Miss Clara Luz, she's the mother of my children. She's a good mother. I consider her a good person. And I would like to please ask the court to excuse all this misunderstanding. All right. If the court allowed uh, Miss Escobedo Salazar to come home, do you have any fear of future violence? Señor, si este tribunal permite que la señora Escobar uh, Escobedo Salazar regrese a casa, ¿usted tiene algún temor? No, para nada. Es una persona muy buena. Tengo 8 o 10 años de conocerla. Es una persona muy buena. No, not at all, Your Honor. I've been known to her. We've had a relationship for the past 10 years. There's no fear at all. Have there been any instances of violence in the past? ¿Ha habido cualquier incidente de violencia doméstica en el pasado? Mm, no, realmente no. Mm, no, not really, no. Are there any minor children in the home? Hay niños menores en la casa. Sí. Yes. How old are the children? ¿Qué edad tienen los niños? Eh, tengo mi bebé que tiene tres años y medio, once, doce y dieciséis años, mi niña más grande. Uh, the smallest baby is three years and a half, then there's an 11 year old, a 12 year old, and the eldest daughter, she is 16. Have there been any issues of violence with regards to the children in the past? Ha habido cualquier incidente de violencia que con respecto a los niños en el pasado. Solamente la niña de 11 años tuvo un problema con su antiguo papá. Le dieron la custodia a mi esposa porque su esposa le hizo daño a la niña, pero el resto todo normal, gracias a Dios. The only problem was with the 11 year old that she had a, uh, an issue with her uh, old stepfather. So they gave the custody to my wife, but that's the only thing, not with us. Understood. Entendido. Okay. And do you have access to a cell phone in case there were acts of violence in the future? Señor, ¿usted tiene acceso a un teléfono celular en caso de que hubiera algún incidente de violencia en un futuro? Sí, sí, señor. Yes, yes, sir. Ms. Guadalupe, any uh, questions for this witness? No, Your Honor. Preguntas para este testigo, no, su señoría. Mr. Rosario, any questions for our witness? Señor yes, Rosario, question. alguna pregunta? Una pregunta, su señoría. Um, Mr. Uh, Daniel, do you have a job? Uh, señor, ¿usted uh, trabaja? Sí, tengo mi propia compañía. Mi esposa es mi socia. Yes, I have my own uh, business and my wife, she's my partner. Does your, your wife work with you in the, in the company? 
¿Su esposa trabaja con usted en esta empresa? Sí, sí, es mi socia, sí. Yes, she is. She's my co-partner in the business. No further question, Your Honor. Thank you. No hay más preguntas, su señoría. Yes. Based on the sworn testimony of the alleged victim in this case and based on the court's review of the charging affidavit, the court will allow the parties to have contact. That contact will be non-hostile contact. Basándonos en la declaración del testigo en el informe policial y el expediente, este tribunal declara que las partes podrán tener contacto. Ese contacto tiene que ser nada hostil. Non-hostile contact means exactly what it sounds like. You guys may not uh, argue, and ma'am, you may not put your hands on your husband without his permission. Contacto sin hostilidades es exactamente lo que dice ser, sin hostilidades. Señora, ustedes no podrán discutir y usted, señora, no podrá poner sus manos por encima de su esposo. The court will allow the defendant to uh, return to the family home. Este tribunal permitirá que la acusada regrese al hogar conyugal. That will conclude our hearing. Thank you. Con eso finalizamos esta vista. Your Honor, we don't have a bond amount in this case. $250 plus pretrial release conditions as previously announced. Sí, señoría, no tenemos una fianza en esta causa. $250 dólares más los términos que hemos expresado para su puesta en libertad con cargos. And the, and the PD office appointed, Your Honor? So appointed. Thank you, Your Honor. Te designa el abogado gracias. público para defender. Gra thank you. Mil gracias, que Dios lo bendiga. Many thanks and may God bless. Mr. Interpreter, thank you very much, sir. Feel My pleasure, Your Honor. Thank you and thank you to staff. Yes, sir. Sean Smith. Approaching, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Mr. Smith, you were arrested based on an allegation of criminal mischief of a thousand dollars or more. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for that arrest. I'm going to lower your bond to five hundred dollars, and I will appoint the office of the public defender to represent your interest. Hey, uh, oh, sir. Yes, sir. I don't want I don't want no public defender to represent me, and also. Um, you, you can't you can't you can't bum me out you can't uh, give me a um just just a free bond because I was under the influence these people they doped me up they sent me to the hospital and they doped me up so I was under the influence of the the, the drug that they put in me I so I would see the reason why I went to the hospital because I was under the influence and then they drugged me up again they, they, they drugged me up so I was double under the influence so the damage that I caused, it was due to the fact that I was on all the drugs that they gave me. I don't know what the drug called, but they gave me, they gave, they took me, gave me a shot. Yes. They, called, they, they gave me a, um, a shot. And then once I took the shot, I started, I started going crazy. And what I do, I was under the influence. So I don't even supposed to be in here. Mr. Smith, that, uh, to, that sounds like I a reasonable, I listened to you now, now you need to listen yes, to sir. me sounds like a reasonable defense that you may have in your case. Today my right. role is to just take a look at the charging affidavit to find whether there's probable cause and to grant All you right. a bond. If you don't qualify for pretrial release, uh, I've granted you a low bond based on the allegations and uh, uh, I will keep the appointment of the public defender. You can fire them at any time but you need to have a discussion with your trial judge as to whether you're going to represent yourself or not um, and they'll no. keep an eye on you make sure you don't sit in jail for, for a while. Okay, so you got a bond. It's, it's five hundred dollars. Fifty dollars. All right. Yes, sir. And that's it, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Austin, Oldham County. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. We have two private counsel. Good morning. I think we've advanced y'all's cases. Judge, I have Natalie Ooh. with treats. All right. Good morning, Mr. Zimiaski. Good morning, Your Honor. Happy okay. Sunday. Do we have any witnesses here on behalf of Ms. LaCrete? Not that I'm aware of, Your Honor. All right, thank you.
Good morning, Ms. LaCrete. Ms. LaCrete, you were arrested based on an allegation of 825.102, subsection 3, subsection C. Is the defense waiver reading of yes, the Honor. charges? A waiver of reading, Ms. LaCrete, indicates to me that you know what the charges are against you. Is that correct? All right, thank you. I do find probable cause for your charges. I have reviewed the conditions of release. You were arrested pursuant to a warrant. Judge Weiss granted a bond in the amount of $5,000. Mr. Simieski, do you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Judge, I have spoken to uh, a number of family members um, in regards to Ms. LaCrete's case this morning. Um, she does have children. They're, they're teens, correct? Are they 19 and 23, Judge. Um, I spoke to them um, regarding the bond. They don't have the present ability. At the time of her arrest, Ms. LaCrete was unemployed for 12 months. And this, this has been an ongoing investigation that we've dealt with for quite some time with OPD. Um, many of her uh, financial assets were actually taken by OPD. So she's truthfully without the uh, necessary funds to post bond. In reviewing the first appearance information sheet, I do see that she would qualify for pretrial release. Uh, looks like she has one prior misdemeanor conviction in 2013 for a no valid. So we would ask the court to consider her allow, uh, allowing her to bond out on pretrial release. Based on uh, the court's uh, review of a lack of an appreciable criminal history, the court is inclined um, to release her on to the pretrial release program with the following conditions. She's to have no contact whatsoever with the alleged victim in this case. Is there an issue with housing? Did they, are they? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. She's not to return to the home of the uh, uh, alleged victim. So, Judge, the, she was a, um, a home health nurse. He was being cared for in her home. So he's no longer there. So I would assume she'd be allowed to return to her home. He's no longer there. He's. That's Okay. Yeah, so I will strike the uh, not allowed to return to the home. Yeah. Well, no, it's just going to be the victim. Just the victim only? Right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was unable to hear what the clerk. It's just the no contact, correct? That's correct. Thank you, Judge. All right, and uh, Judge Weiss has previously found probable cause for the allegation. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Next case that I have is Jared Mobley. Counsel, are you ready on Mr. Mobley's case? Uh, can be. I gave the state the information, so they're looking it up now. Matthews Bark on behalf of Mr. Mobley. Good morning, Mr. Bark. Good morning, Your Honor. Nice to see you. Likewise. Um, Your Honor, you should be advised that the victim in the case, Brinley Donovan, is present. She, All right. She does wish to be heard. Shall I call her now? Let me uh, make a probable cause determination. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for the allegations uh, contained, which is burglary of a dwelling with an assault or battery and battery domestic violence related. I'll note that we have a witness who is present. Ma'am, we're going to place you under oath. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Brinley Donovan. I'm having a really tough time hearing you. That's a pretty directional microphone, so you can, if you'll get close to the microphone, that'll help us. Yeah, Brinley Donovan. Thank you, Ms. Donovan. And you are listed as the alleged victim in this case. Today, I'm going to be making some determinations as to conditions of bond and whether there should be contact between you two. Do you wish to give me any information regarding those decisions? Can you say that again? I'm going to be making a d decision as to conditions of release right. and whether there should be contact between you two. Do you wish to give me some information about those decisions? Um, and I need you to get close to the microphone again. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not in fear of Jared Mobley. Um, I think he was intoxicated. Um, 
you know, I, I'm not in fear for my life of him. Right. I think he's a good person. Um, is, is alcohol seem to be a common theme in some of the issues? Um, a couple times. I wouldn't say a common theme, um, but I would say it's a, a direct result of being intoxicated. Understood. Um, if he was, do you guys live together? No. All right. If he was allowed to have no hostile contact with you, is that something that you would be amenable to, or would you prefer that the court ordered no contact? Um, I would be fine with no hostile contact, if that's an option. All right. Has there been any issues of violence in the past? Um, no. Not serious. Do you share children in common? No. Any children in your home? No. Do you have a cell phone with which you could contact law enforcement if there was an issue in the future? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Guadalupe, any questions for the witness? No, Your Honor. And uh, Ms. Taylor? Any, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Park? Uh, Ms. Donovan, would, would you like Mr. Mobley released today? Yes. That's all the questions I have. witnesses mr Barton? no that's all i have your honor right thank you i have reviewed uh, mr mobley's charging affidavit i had note that the risk assessment uh, pursuant to the information that the court has uh, indicates a low risk assessment i believe that he does not qualify for the pretrial release program however the court would be amenable to granting bonds in this case Bond in count one will be set in the amount of $2,500 as to count two in the amount of $500. Mr. Mobley is to have no hostile contact with the alleged victim in the case. No hostile contact means exactly what it sounds like, Mr. Mobley. No yelling, swearing, getting in anybody's face, no putting your hands on anyone without their permission. Do you understand? court is going to make as a condition of your bond that you are to possess or consume no alcohol and you may not return to the 125 North Hillside Avenue address you you do not have any personal belongings there is that correct no all right thank you state anything further nothing further your honor mr. Bart no your honor thank you all right thank you that will conclude our hearing have a nice weekend Interpreter cases. Yes. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning again, Mr. Interpreter. For for the record, Jose Sandra, certified Spanish interpreter, previously sworn in. Thank you. We have Ms. Gutierrez Arias uh, at the podium and the case number. I have a booking number of 21004320. Sí, sí, la escucho. Your Honor, we have a connection, but with a lot of uh, echo. Okay, we're going to try and shift our microphones around a little bit to uh, assist you. Did that perfect? Uh, did that improve matters? Yes, we we could hear perfect now. Thank you, Your Honor. Of course, ma'am, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery domestic violence in 2021 MM 1251. I find probable cause for that allegation. The court will be setting a bond in that case in the amount of $1,000. You are to have no contact. Uh, 
with the victim in this case. And that apparently is Casey Jackson. All right, give me just a moment. Yeah, that would be uh, the victim, alleged victim is Casey Jackson. Do you and Mr. Jackson, well, I'm gonna point the office of the public defender, Ms. Uh, Taylor, do you want to ask your client whether they cohabitate? Um, I'm, my Spanish isn't very good, Your Honor. Yes. We've been living together for two months. All right, whose apartment is it? De quien es el apartment? He rents it out. All right. You're not going to be able to return to 1863 South Cimarron Boulevard, Apartment B. Do you have personal belongings in that apartment? Yes, my, yes, Your Honor, I have many things in there. You'll be allowed to return one time with law enforcement to get some personal belongings while this gets sorted out. I also note that you are out on your own recognizance on a felony allegation in 2020 CF 11205. Court is going to revoke your ROR in that case. I understand you are participating in the pretrial diversion program. Court is going to set bond in the amount of none as I have probable cause to believe you have committed a crime alleging violence while on a form of release. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in each case. I will conclude our hearing. Thank you. May I say something? I would like to say to your honor that I did lift a can that I was holding in my hand that only had liquid in it, but he did punch me in the head first and I have a big bruise. I have a, a bulge here in my head that I could show to the court if you wish. Ma'am, that may be a defense to the allegations and uh, I understand that you want to give me some information today. I am just making a probable cause determination today. That will be a discussion for your trial court and your attorney. They also can petition for a reconsideration of bond on the case that I have revoked your bond on. For purposes of today, that will conclude our hearing. Thank you. So what does that exactly mean? That I do not have a bond? I cannot pay, bond myself out? I just have to wait here till everything's resolved? Your attorney will get you in front of the trial court on the case in which you are participating in pretrial diversion. I have revoked your release on that case based on the allegation of a new law offense. So you are correct. So what does that mean? Your attorney will be will be uh, out to explain your situation and discuss your options with you. So 
So I have another case. I have another date on Wednesday, and I also have another case with the custody of my child. She's in the hands of social services of the department, but I have to be downtown on Wednesday. Your attorney is aware of those uh, hearings, and uh, they will be notifying those courts and uh, attempting to arrange your participation. Thank you. Alejandro Marin Hildago. Mr. Interpreter, this is 2021 MM1252. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Marin Hildago, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery, domestic violence related. I have read the charging affidavit and find probable cause for that arrest. I'll note for the record we have a witness that is present. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Do you need the assistance of an interpreter, ma'am? Señora, ¿usted necesita la asistencia de un intérprete en español? Thank you. Please uh, follow the clerk's directions. Raise your right hand, please. Levante la mano derecha. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Usted jura decir la verdad, toda la verdad, y nada más que la verdad? Sí, lo juro. Yes, I do. You may put your hand down. Thank you. Baje la mano. I will be considering conditions of release and whether contact is appropriate between you and Mr. Marin Hidalgo. Señora, este tribunal le escuchará y, y con eso considerará las condiciones de puesta en libertad y los términos con respecto al señor Marin Hidalgo. Do you wish to give me some information in making those decisions? ¿Usted desea hacer una declaración para que yo pueda tomar esa decisión, señora? Mm. Yo no quiero presentar cargos, solo eh, tuvimos un problema por falta de comunicación y ya. I do not want to press charges. We just had a small issue due to bad communication. If the court considered allowing contact between you and Mr. Marn Hildago, uh, are you in fear of further acts of violence? Si este tribunal toma en cuenta la puesta en libertad del señor Marín Hidalgo, ¿usted teme uh, por su seguridad con él? No. No. Are there any minor children in the home? Hay hijos menores en la casa. Mis hijos son mayores. Uh, my children are of, of elder age. Have there ever been any issues of violence with the children? ¿Alguna vez ha habido incidentes de violencia con los niños en el pasado? No. No. Have there ever been issues of violence between you and Mr. Marn Hildago in the past? ¿Alguna vez ha habido incidentes de violencia entre usted y el señor Marín Hidalgo en el pasado? No. No. Do you have a phone or cell phone or a way to communicate with law enforcement if there were acts of violence in the future? ¿Usted tiene un teléfono o un teléfono celular para poder comunicar con las autoridades en caso de que hubiese cualquier incidente de violencia con el señor Marín Hidalgo? Sí. Yes. Well, do you have any uh, additional questions for the witness? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Taylor, any questions for the witness? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Gracias, señora. No hay más preguntas para el testigo. Based on a review of the charging affidavit, as well as the information sheet provided to the court, the court is going to order that he be released, excuse me, Mr. Marn Hidalgo be released on pretrial release. As a condition of pretrial release, he is to have no hostile contact 
with Is it uh, Jetty Carolina Soto de Marin? Yes. Yes. No hostile contact means exactly what it sounds like. You may not uh, argue loudly. You may not push, shove. You may not uh, get in each other's faces. Do you understand, sir? Of course. Thank you. I will allow you to return to the family home, sir. And the Office of the Public Defender is appointed to represent your interest. That will conclude our hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Excel. Tejeda Costa. Good morning, sir. Are you Mr. Tejeda Acosta? Yes. Sir, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery, domestic violence related. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and I do find probable cause for your arrest. Based on a review of your criminal history and a risk assessment, you will be released to the pretrial release program. As a condition of that program, you are to have no contact with the alleged victim in this case. And that would be Dakir Tejeda, Dr. Tejeda. Is that your brother? Yes. I'm going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interests. Do you live in the same house as your brother? Uh, yes. For the time being, you're not going to be allowed to return to that house at 1813 Grand Point. I will allow you to return one time with law enforcement to get some personal belongings until this case gets sorted out. Do you have other family members you can live with? Yes. That will conclude our hearing today. Elmer Osorio Rivera. Mr. Interpreter, I'm sorry I didn't give you the case number on the last case. The last case, the interpret, uh, the case number was 2021 MM 1250. This case is 2021 CF 2148. Thank you, Your Honor. Are you Mr. Osorio Rivera? Yes, that is correct. Mr. Osorio Rivera, you were arrested based on allegations of falsely impersonating an officer, performing as a security officer without a license, and open carrying of weapons or firearms. I have read the charging affidavit. The court is, does not find probable cause for the initial charge of falsely impersonating a law enforcement officer. I do find probable cause for counts two and three 
performing as a security officer without a license and open carry of a weapon or firearm. As to count one, you will be released on your own recognizance. As to count two, your bond will be set in the amount of $500. As to count three, your bond will be set in the amount of $1,000 with the special conditions that you possess no firearms or weapons and that you not operate as any security officer without a valid Florida license. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. Thank you. Eddie Perez Perez, Mr. Interpreter, the case numbers are 2021 437. I'm sorry, it's 2021 CT 145 and 2021 CT 146. Good morning, sir. You are Mr. Perez Perez, is that correct? Yes. Mr. Perez Perez, you were arrested based on two allegations. The first being driving with no valid driver's license and the second being DUI with an unlawful blood alcohol level of 0.15 or higher. I have reviewed the charging affidavits in your case. I do find probable cause for each allegation. Your bond as to the no valid driver's license will be $500. Your bond as to the DUI will be $500. And I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interests. Thank you. Joel Ramirez, Mr. Interpreter, the case number 2021-1. is a warrant case. The number that we have is LCS21-200006. Are you Mr. Ramirez? Yes. Mr. Ramirez, you are arrested based on an out-of-county warrant from Levy County. In that county, Judge Bullard issued a warrant for your arrest. Bond has been set in the amount of $200,000. Thank you, sir. Jose Saray Pardo. Yes. Mr. Interpreter, the case number is 2021 CF 2133. You are Mr. Saray Pardo? Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, you were arrested based on an allegation of trespass on a designated construction site. I have reviewed the allegations against you and I find probable cause for your arrest. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interests. Your bond is set in the amount of $1,000. Thank you, sir. Your Honor. Yes. The defendant has an immigration detainer that he needs to be advised of. Right, thank you. Apparently there is an immigration detainer, so you need to be advised of that. Uh, in advance of considering posting bond. Even if you expended the resources to post bond, you might not be released based on that detainer. If you have any additional questions, you can ask your appointed attorney. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, officer.
Is that the last of our interpreter cases? I have a Terry West, but that doesn't sound like an interpreter case. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Interpreter, I think that was the last of our interpreter cases. Thank you for your help. Uh, Your Honor, respectfully, may the interpreter inquire with the staff if any of witnesses for domestic violence uh, in the public will need the interpreter before I log off? Okay, we're, we're having a lot of negative head shakes, so I think uh, the answer is no. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you for your assistance. You are Ms. West. Good morning, Ms. West. Ms. West, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery domestic violence related. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for your arrest. I understand that uh, this particular inmate was not uh, interviewed for consideration for pretrial release. That's correct, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to uh, grant you a bond with the, uh, of $500 with the special conditions of bond. You have no contact with the alleged victim and you not return to the 528 Glen Road address. Do you have personal belongings at that address? Yes, I will. I'm going to let you return one time with law enforcement to get some personal belongings while this gets sorted out. In the alternative, if you qualify for pretrial release, the court will uh, uh, approve pretrial release with the same conditions of pretrial release. So you want to do bond or PTR? Correct. So that might save you the bond money if you qualify, and they'll be out to talk to you soon about uh, about those uh, requirements. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Evans. Ms. Evans, you were arrested based on an allegation of possession of meth methalone. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for that allegation. I'm going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. In that case, you'll be granted a bond in the amount of $500 as to that case. Unfortunately, you're also out on bond in 2020 CF 15225. Um, the court has probable cause to believe you committed a new law offense while you were released on bond. On that case, going to revoke your bond in that case. Your bond's going to be set at none for the time being until you can get in front of your trial judge. You may petition that judge for a change uh, or a reinstatement of bond. I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender on that case as well if they weren't previously appointed. Thank you. Thank you. Jamar Witter. Mr. Witter was a refusal. Okay. Ms. Taylor, Mr. Witter was, uh, are you Mr. Witter? No, not that. Oh. Mr. Witter was a uh, refusal. I was inclined to appoint the Office of the Public Defender on 2021 CF 2139, 2021 MM 137, 2021 MM 1259. Do you wish to waive his appearance or would you like him to be recalled? He was a refusal. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and waive his appearance then. All right. Court will accept a uh, waiver of his appearance on 2021 CF 2139, 2021 MM 137, and 2021 MM 1259. He's not going anywhere. He's got a no bond uh, failure to appear warrant in 2021 MM 12, uh, sorry, 137. And that was out of Division 50. Court finds probable cause for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and carrying a concealed weapon. Bonds in that case will be set in the amount of $5,000 as to count one and $1,000 as to count two. He used to have no contact with the alleged victim in that case and possess no weapons or firearms. As to 2021 MM 1259, he'd be granted a bond in the amount of $500. He used to have no contact with the alleged victim in that case. Five thousand, one thousand is to the felony case. In the last case, it was five hundred dollars. 
no, no contact. All right, thank you. All right, the next case that I have is Mr. Butler. Are you Mr. Butler? Good morning, Mr. Butler. All right, Mr. Butler, uh, you were arrested based on an allegation of kidnapping and battery domestic violence. I have reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for uh, the allegations pursuant to a reading of the facts in the affidavit. Count one is a uh, punishable by life offense. You're going to remain on no bond on that case. Count two is battery domestic violence. I will grant you a thousand dollar bond with the conditions that you have no contact with the victim and not return to the location where this occurred. I'm going to appoint the office of the public defender to represent your interests. They can get you in front of the trial judge and see whether a bond is appropriate as to count one or not after an evidentiary hearing. Thanks. To Jerry Kadeska, you Mr. Kadeska, good morning. good morning. Mr. Kadeska, you were arrested based on an allegation of false imprisonment and battery domestic violence. I note that we have a witness present. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to place you under oath at this time. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Ma'am, I'm going to be making some decisions as to uh, conditions of bond and whether contact between you two uh, is appropriate. Can you tell me your name, please? My name is Patricia Kodaska. All right. And uh, you are... listed as the uh, alleged victim in this case. Do you wish to give me any information in making those decisions? Uh, yes, it was just a can misunderstanding. Can I get you a little closer to the microphone? Thank you. Sure. It was a misunderstanding between us. All right. Thank you. Um, have there been instances of violence in the past? Mm, not violence, just disagreements. Okay. Do you have a means of communication such as a cell phone uh, in case there were issues of violence in the future? Yes. If the court considered allowing uh, you to have contact or Mr. Kadeska to have contact with you, does that place you in any fear of further violence? No. Do you live together with Mr. Kadeska? Yes. All right. Do you wish to have Mr. Kadeska return to the home? Yes. Are there any minor children in the home? Yes, sir. Okay. How old are the children? 13, 14, and 8. Have there ever been instances of violence with Mr. Kadeska and the children? No. Any fear for the children's safety if he is allowed to return to the home? No. Ms. do you have any questions for the witness? No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Taylor, any additional questions? Um, just briefly, Your Honor. Um, Ma'am, do, um, do you wish to have um, contact if it's no hostile contact? Correct. Okay. Um, no, nothing further, Your Honor. And I just have uh, one brief argument as to probable cause. I was going to find no PC as to false imprisonment. Okay, great. Thank you. I've reviewed the charging affidavit. I think the probable cause is insufficient for a charge of a false imprisonment. I do find probable cause for the allegation of battery, domestic violence. The court's going to grant a bond in the amount of $500 plus the following conditions. Sir, you have no hostile contact with your wife. That means exactly what it sounds like. Not to 
get into an argument, not to get into a screaming match, cannot get into her face, may not put your hands on her without her permission. Do you understand? Yes, you are. The court will allow you to return to the family home, and I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interests. Thank you, sir. Did you ROR on count one? I ROR'd as to count one. All right, thank you. Any witnesses here on the Coleman case? Seeing none. Mr. Coleman is unable to attend court um, based on a condition. The court's going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender in 2021, CF 2089. Ms. Taylor, do you wish to uh, waive Mr. Coleman's appearance or would you like him recalled? Judge, for this one, I, I think I'd like a recall, the domestic, um, just so they can hear the conditions. And Understood. No all right, uh, we will uh, reset Mr. Coleman's case for tomorrow in front of the regular IA judge. Jawan Bagley. Good morning, Mr. Bagley. Good morning. All right, I note that I believe we have a witness on Mr. Bagley's Case, Mr. Bagley, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery, domestic violence related. I have reviewed the charging affidavit and I do find probable cause for the charge of battery, domestic violence. I'll note for the record we have a witness who is present. Ma'am, good yes. morning. We're going to place you under oath. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Jamika Dawson. All right, thank you. Ms. Dawson, you are listed as the alleged victim in the report. I'm going to be making some decisions as to conditions of bond and whether contact is appropriate uh, between Mr. Bagley and yourself. Do you wish to give me any information in making those decisions? Yes. Um, I just want to say he had been out at work all day from that morning un until the time I picked him up. So. He works a very stressful job, so therefore he was very stressed out at the time. I was upset. Um, we had a disagreement. I mean, like, I don't wish to pursue charges. I do wish to still have contact with him. We live together. Um, he has a child, which I have a relationship with, and I just want to see this case go away. I don't want to prosecute him in any way. Okay. Well, the assistant state attorney is present and has heard your wishes. That uh, is beyond my... Uh uh, ability today at this hearing, but uh, I certainly do want to consider your thoughts on contact and conditions of bond. If Mr. Bagley were allowed to have non-hostile contact with you, are you uh, worried of further acts of violence? Oh, I'm, no, I'm not worried about All that. Right. And if he was returned into the family home, are you worried of further acts of violence? At, I'm not worried at all. He's not a threat to me or my family. All right. Thank you. Do you have a means of communication should uh, a further act of violence occur? Uh, I do have a means of communication, but I don't have any um, thoughts of any more violence or anything happening. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Guadalupe, any questions for the witness? No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Taylor? No, Your Honor. Right. The court notes that uh, pursuant to the risk assessment uh, information sheet, the uh, risk assessment is a low assessment. Uh, Mr. Bagley does qualify for the pretrial release program and he will be released to pretrial release with the following conditions that he have no hostile contact with the alleged victim, Ms. Dawson. He will be allowed to return to the family home. 
Mr. Bagley, no hostile contact means exactly what it sounds like. You may not uh, get into a loud verbal argument. You may not uh, get in anyone. Uh, you may not get in Miss Dawson's face. You can't put your hands on her without her permission. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, I think I've previously appointed the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Emily Diaz. Good morning, Ms. Diaz. Good morning, Ms. Diaz, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery domestic violence related. I took a look at the charging affidavit and I do find probable cause for your initial arrest. I note that we have a witness present. Could you tell me your name, please? My name is Nicole Diaz. Thank you, Ms. Diaz. And we're gonna place you under oath. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Ms. Diaz, uh, you've heard the proceedings this morning. I'm uh, going to ask you whether you have any information with which I can consider uh, the following issues, whether contact is appropriate between you and Ms. Diaz, and uh, whether you wish for Ms. Diaz to return to the family home. Do you have any information uh, regarding those decisions? Yes, yeah, so it's okay if we keep contact and it's okay if she returns home. All right. Um, we had a simple misunderstanding, a minor inconvenience that led to things out of hand. She doesn't deserve to be put through this. So I just hope that no cases are charged against her and you guys are able to forgive her. All right, thank you. If uh, she was allowed to return to the home and have non-hostile contact with you, do you fear any more issues of violence? No. Have there been issues of violence in the past? No. Any children shared in common? No, we just have two dogs. <laughs> All right. Do you have a means of communication if there were any alleged future acts of violence? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Do you have a cell phone or a, a telephone at home that you could call law enforcement if you felt that uh, you were in danger? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Ms. Guadalupe? I have no questions, Your Honor. Ms. Taylor? No, Your Honor. All right, based on the... Uh, Sworn testimony of the alleged victim in this case, as well as a review of Ms. Diaz's prior criminal history and a below average risk assessment, uh, the court is going to release Ms. Diaz on pretrial release with the following special conditions. You're to have no hostile contact uh, with Nicole Diaz. Tell me your name one more time. Nicole Diaz. Ms. Diaz. Uh, that means exactly what it sounds like. No loud verbal fights. You can't get in her face. You can't put your hands on her without her permission. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. Um, the court will allow you to return to the family home, and I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interests. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is she being released on bond, or is she just being released? Straight pre-trial pre release, so there will be no monetary bond. They're going to get some information and process her out. She should be out in a couple hours. All right. Thank you, sir. Yep, thank you. Nicole Jackson. Good morning. Good morning. Ms. Jackson, uh, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery dating violence. I reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for your initial arrest. I'll note for the record that we have a witness present. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, uh, if you'll follow the uh, clerk's instructions. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Sir, you're going to have to bend down pretty far to get uh, near that microphone so I can hear you. I apologize for that. Yes, sir. Inconvenience. Can you tell me your name, sir? Kyle Embry. Thank you, Mr. Embry. You are listed as the alleged victim uh, in the charging affidavit. I'm going to be making some decisions as to whether it is appropriate for Ms. Jackson to have contact with you. Uh, and uh, I will be asking whether you guys cohabitate or live together. Do you wish to give me any information regarding those decisions? Uh, no, sir. Okay. So you're not going to give, you don't want to give me any information? Well, I mean, what, depending upon the question, I'm, I'm not, I, everything's okay to me. I'm right. okay. I'm not so, pressing charges or pressing this any further. All right. I'm going to ask you some specific questions then. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Embry, uh, if the court considered allowing... Ms. Jackson, to have no hostile contact with you, do you have any fears of future incidents of violence? 
I have no fear of any violence, and I am okay with contact. Have there been any instances of violence in the past? No, sir. Do you share any children in common? Mm, uh, we have pets, if that <laughs> counts. All right, so no children in the home? No, sir. All right, if she were, uh, uh, do you guys live together? Yes, sir. If she was allowed to return to the family home, do you have any concerns of violence? No, sir. Do you have a means of communication to call law enforcement if there was a concern of violence? Repeat the question. Do you have a means of communication to contact law enforcement if there was yes, an act yes, of violence? Yes, I could, but I don't need to. Thank you. Ms. Guadalupe, any uh, questions? No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Taylor? No, Your Honor. Thank you for that information, sir. Based on a review of Ms. Jackson's criminal history, which is limited, and a risk assessment of low, she qualifies for the pretrial release program. You will be released to the pretrial release program with the following special conditions. You're to have no hostile contact with Mr. Embry. That means exactly what it sounds like. You may not get in his face. You may not have a loud verbal uh, conflict. You may not put your hands on him without his permission. Do you understand? Yes. You will be allowed to return to the family home, and I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. As I told the young lady before you, it takes about a couple hours to get the paperwork squared away and you should be released. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Chris Kolzinski. Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Kolzinski, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery dating violence. I have reviewed the charging affidavit, and I do find probable cause for your initial arrest. I'll note for the record that we have a witness present. Ma'am, we're going to place you under oath. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. If you'll get close to that microphone for me, thank you. Ma'am, can you give me your name? Uh, Regina Dennison. All right. You're very soft-spoken. I think it was Miss Dennison, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Miss Dennison, I'm sorry. I know this is probably uncomfortable, but if you could speak up nice and loud into the microphone. Okay. I'm going to be making some decisions as to whether contact is appropriate and whether may, Mr. Kolzinski may have contact with you, and then uh, I will be inquiring as to whether you guys live together or cohabitate. Do you wish to give me any information on some of those decisions? Uh, yes, I'd like for the charges to be considered dismissed. It was a big miscommunication. All right, I understand. Um, dismissal of charges is a state function. That's not something that the court can do upon request. However, an assistant state attorney is present and will make note of your wishes, and there may be a process that you'll be advised of as to how to formally go about that. Uh, if, you, if I ordered no hostile contact between Mr. Kolzinski and yourself, uh, is that something you are seeking, uh, and do you fear any further instances of violence? No, Your Honor, I'm not seeking it, and I don't fear any further, I don't have any further fear. Okay, so do you wish to have no contact with Mr. Kolzinski at this time? Uh, no. Okay. Yes, I would like contact. Understood, okay. All right, um, if the court, okay, and you've answered the question that if I allowed no hostile contact, you would not fear any acts of violence, correct? No. Have there been acts of physical violence in the past? No, Your Honor. Do you guys cohabitate? Do you live together? No, Your Honor. All right, thanks. All right. And uh, there's no children in common, correct? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Do you have a means of communication that you could communicate with law enforcement uh, if you feared further acts of violence? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Guadalupe, any questions? Ma'am, does he usually become aggressive when he consumes alcohol? Uh, no. No further questions. Thank you. Ms. Taylor, any questions? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you. I have reviewed Mr. Kolzinski's 
prior criminal history. It is limited. His risk assessment is below average. Uh, and as such, he qualifies for release on the pretrial release program. As a condition of pretrial release, Mr. Kolzinski is going to have no hostile contact with Ms. Dennison. Mr. Kolzinski will not be allowed to return to Ms. Dennison's residence until this gets sorted out and that's 307 Main Street. As a condition of pretrial release, Mr. Kolzinski is to consume no alcohol. And as a condition of pretrial release, he will be randomly tested for any alcohol in his system. And Mr. Kolzinski will not frequent any place for the sole purpose of the sale of alcohol. Restaurants are fine, but you can't be in the bar section. Do you understand, Mr. Kolzinski? Yes, sir. All right. I will appoint the office of the pub. I'm sorry, you don't qualify for the services of the public defender's office based on your stated amount. You'll need to talk to some of the private counsel in town. There's some good ones that should this case proceed. Um, and uh, at this point, uh, the charges have not formally been filed against you. All right. Thank you. That will conclude our hearing. Thank you. Capri Miller. Good morning, Mr. Miller, or good afternoon. Good morning, or afternoon. All right. Mr. Miller, you were arrested based on an allegation of tampering uh, with a witness domestic related. I took a look at the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for that allegation. The bond is going to be set in the amount of $1,000. You're not to have contact with Carrie Ann Miller, and you're not to return to the Conroy, Conroy Road, apartment 638 address. Do you have personal belongings there? Uh, yeah, but not really. Either. Okay. I'll like allow you to return one time if you need to with law enforcement to get those personal belongings if you need them while this gets sorted out. Okay. All right. And I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. That'll do it for you. Thanks. Have a good day. See you. You as well. Lawan Miller. Good afternoon, Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery dating violence. I took a look at the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for that allegation. You're going to qualify for a bond. That bond will be set in the amount of $1,500. As a condition of that bond, you're not to have any contact with the alleged victim in this case. Uh, and you are not to return to 4662 Kirkland. Do you have any personal belongings at that place? Um, that is actually my address. She doesn't stay there. Let me take a quick look. <coughs> All right, the court's gonna amend that to you are to maintain separate residences. Uh, from the victim. So if she's there and you get back there, you cannot be there. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. And so I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. Thank you, sir. Kira Parks. Am I pronouncing that correctly or is it Kyra? It's Kyra Parks. Good morning, Ms. Parks. Good morning. Ms. Parks, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery dating violence. I have taken a look at the charging affidavit and I do find probable cause for that initial arrest. Based on a review of your lack of any criminal history, um, you qualify for pretrial release. I will release you on pretrial release with the following conditions. You're not to have any contact with the alleged victim in this case. And, that would be George Smith. 
and you're not going to be able to return to the Sun Spring Circle number 33 address. Do you have personal belongings there? Yes. Okay. You can return one time with law enforcement to get some personal belongings while this case gets sorted out. And I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Thanks. Right. You Mr. Aquino Castro? Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good, I said good morning. It's good afternoon. Mr. Kino Castro, you were arrested based on an allegation of possessing cocaine in uh, 2021 CF 2124. I find probable cause for that allegation. Your bond set in the amount of $500, and I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest on that case. Unfortunately, you're out on bond for the same type of offense in 2021 CF 1190. Um, I'm going to revoke your bond in that case. At this time, your bond is going to be set at none. Your attorney, Ms. Barrow, will be notified of that decision, can get you in front of your trial judge, and they'll make a determination as to whether bond is appropriate. I'll appoint the Office of the Public, it looks like you already have the Public Defender's Office, but I'll appoint uh, the Office of the Public Defender on that case as well. So you're going to be with us a little while longer while that other case gets sorted out. Thanks. Judge, I, I don't uh, typically make arguments when there's an out on bond case, and I know the court has authority to revoke the release, I just wanted to point out something in the affidavit. Okay. Um, the officer states, I notified Aquino he didn't do anything wrong and he was free to leave. I asked if I could search his person. He hesitated and refused. And then the officer asked if he could empty out his pockets. Um, obviously, I'm not here to argue a motion to suppress, but based on um, the fact that this arrest very well may have been based on an illegal search, um, I would just ask if the court may be inclined to set a new bond on the out on bond case. That's a reasonable request and I had the same concern uh, uh, regarding the search, Ms. Taylor. Uh, obviously I've got to assume that the allegations in the affidavit are true for a probable cause determination. Uh, however, I do think, uh, let me take a quick look at a criminal history. I've got a, a, a last conviction date of April 12, 2020. Uh, that was a drug-related offense. I've got him out on bond on a drug-related offense, and it remains to be seen whether it was a product of a lawful search, but it appears that there's probable cause to believe he possessed cocaine again. So at this point, uh, I'm going to stick with the no bond uh, finding, and uh, he can make that pitch uh, to his trial judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks. To Lisa Bass, you miss Bass? I can hear you through the mask. Okay. To Lisa Bass. All right, thank you, Miss Bass. Miss Bass, uh, you were arrested based on an allegation of violation of conditional release pursuant to a warrant. You have a bond on that case. The bond is set in the amount of five hundred dollars, and I will appoint the office of the public defender to represent you. Thanks. Good afternoon, Mr. Candelaria. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Mr. Candelaria, you were arrested based on an allegation of uh, burglary of an occupied structure, possession of burglary tools, use of an anti-shoplifting control device, and petty theft with two prior convictions in 2021 CF 2123. I have taken a look at the charging affidavit. Uh, in this case, as to counts two, three, and four, I find probable cause and bonds will be set in the following manner. Bond is to count two will be set in the amount of $1,000, count three in the amount of $150, and count four in the amount of $150. State, I am somewhat confused as to the allegation of burglary of an occupied structure and, and the allegations in the count one. Apparently, uh, and 
Sir, you should, should follow your attorney's advice and not make any statements regarding any facts of the case. A review of the affidavit indicates that uh, a manager came in the early, or reviewed video from the early morning of February 16th. I can't tell whether the business was open or closed, whether it was occupied or non-occupied, and whether there was some trespass with the intent to commit a crime therein that would support the burglary allegation. Any I'm open to suggestions? Um, from reading the affidavit, I agree, Your Honor. Um, I believe we need a supplemental report. Um, All right. So if the state could have a 24-hour period to have an opportunity to get that from the officer. Granted. All right. Uh, pursuant to statute, Mr. Candelaria, the uh, state of Florida has an opportunity to get supplemental information from the law enforcement officers to substantiate the probable cause finding. I have granted that request. You're going to be recalled tomorrow in front of the initial Thank appearance you so judge. Much, uh, Either they're going to have it or they're not. So, so what, what are my charges now? Just uh, Right now it's possession of burglary tools, use of an anti-shoplifting device, and petty theft with two prior theft convictions. If they can establish I've never stole from there before, but okay. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I don't want, I don't want you to talk about your history right, right, right. or the facts of the case because you're being recorded. Yes, sir. So tomorrow they'll bring you back and either they're gonna show probable cause for that burglary charge or they won't. So if I they can take if, a plea tomorrow for the misdemeanors or it's possible. Okay. Well, I doubt or, it. They'll probably it. Let me let me, listen. If they don't find probable cause tomorrow on the burglary allegation. Yes, the judge will issue an ROR, so you'll have the bonds on the other cases. If they do, it's likely that uh, you'll, they'll consider you for a bond. So you'll be bondable tomorrow regardless. What about pleable on the misdemeanor? Uh, that's something you want to discuss with your uh, attorney because they may not just drop the uh, the burglary charge. Well, I know it's not burglary. Okay, well, I, I don't want you to State talk about any of the right, facts. Right, right. No more statements, all right? <laughs> yep, do you want to just stay the bond on count one for the, in the meantime because I can't leave it blank? Unless you want to hold no proof for it. I mean, he's technically entitled to it there. So do you want to stay it? or? Yeah, I'll stay it, I guess, with 24 hours recall to make a probable yeah, cause determination. Yeah, I'll tomorrow, but I know that they're going to pass. Okay. Other bonds remaining as previously stated, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you, Judge. That way, if he decides to bond out tonight, he's yeah. still able to, I guess. Understood. Yeah, so that's only on count one where it stayed. We gotcha. still have changed it on other ones, right? Okay. okay. Yeah, there were amended bond conditions, Madam Pretrial Release Officer. What did I announce? Um, count two is a thousand, and count three and four stayed. Thank you, Madam. Thanks. Demetria Childers. Bonded, Your Honor. Thank you. Are you Mr. Clayton? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good afternoon, Mr. Clayton. Yes, sir. Mr. Clayton, you were arrested based on an allegation of possession of amphetamine in 2021, CF 2140. I have reviewed that charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for the arrest, and I will establish a bond in the amount of $1,000 as to that count and appoint the Office of the Public Defender. I note that you are on Looks like on bond on a felony allegation of petty theft with two prior theft convictions. That's out of April 18th of 2020. I'm going to take no action as to that case. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Bakari Hayes. Not restricted movement, Your Honor. I'm sorry? Not restricted movement. Thank you. I'm going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender for Mr. Hayes on 2021 CF 2121. Would you like uh, for Mr. Hayes to be recalled, Ms. Taylor, or would you like uh, the court to make the probable cause determinations upon a waiver? We can go forward, Judge. All right, the court will accept a waiver of uh, Mr. Hayes's uh, appearance. He's charged with. 11 charges, I'm sorry, 10 charges on this case. Did we see Mr. Hayes yesterday on the possession of a firearm? Yes, Your Honor, you heard the previous case yesterday. Yeah, I think 
think we addressed 2021 CF 2086 yesterday. So he's got 10 charges in 2021 CF 2121. One is uh, trafficking in 400 grams or more of methamphetamine. Uh, bond, court finds probable cause bond set in the amount of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Second charge is possession of methamphetamine in excess of ten grams. Court finds uh, probable cause sets bond in the amount of one thousand dollars. Count two. Count three, sale and delivery of uh, MDMA slash ecstasy. The court finds probable cause sets bond in the amount of one thousand dollars. There's a possession of methamphetamine that seems to be assumed in the uh, first charge, so uh, I'm going to ROR him on that charge. There's a sale and delivery of cannabis within a thousand feet of a school. I read the charging affidavit. Doesn't seem to be any supporting documentation to support sale um, intent to sell or deliver. So he's going to be ROR'd on that count. Possession of cannabis. Court finds probable cause, five hundred dollars. Sale and delivery of cannabis with. Uh, I don't even know what that is. With constructive. That's within a thousand feet of a school. Um, there was no evidence to support uh, that, so he'll be ROR'd on that case. And three counts of possession of drug paraphernalia would be $500 as to each count. Okay. I'll so appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. So, 250. Four, five, and seven. Seven, no PC. Yep. Right? Yep. Okay. Thanks. You, Mr. Hill. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Hill. Good afternoon. Mr. Hill, you were arrested based on an allegation of possession of alprozolam. I find probable cause for that arrest. The court's going to set bond in the amount of five hundred dollars, and I'll appoint the office of the public defender to represent you. Thank you. Yes, please. Keith Laidler. Why did, why, did, why did he not qualify for? Your Honor, it appears that he doesn't have any criminal history. During the interview, the defendant stated that he was planning to bond out and um, turn down any type of supervision. But the fact that he's still incarcerated leads me to believe that perhaps the bonding fell through. Okay. Hmm. I don't think he wanted PGR. Okay. <laughs> Got a straight bond then. Thank you, though. You Mr. Laidler? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Laidler. Good afternoon. Mr. Laidler, you are before the court based on allegations of carry a concealed weapon, possession of controlled substance, and grand theft third degree of a firearm. You've got no prior history. Surprisingly, you qualify for pretrial release. I find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to release you to pretrial release with the special conditions that you not possess any weapons or firearms, that you not consume any alcohol or illegal substances, that you be randomly tested for any drugs or alcohol as a condition of your pretrial release, and I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Thanks. <coughs> Bless you. Okay. Pretrial release officers random testing, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Thanks. Oh. You Mr. Latsis? Yes, ma'am. I mean, yes, sir. I apologize. That's yes. all right. Good afternoon, Mr. Latt. I've been saying ma'am all day, sir. I apologize. I understand. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Latt, since you have a number of offenses, uh, one out of our county and then a bunch out of uh, another county. Uh, here you have a allegation of no valid driver's license. I find probable cause for that uh, arrest and will set bond in the amount of five hundred dollars. Can I say something? There's also. Sorry, I'm sure your attorney would prefer that you didn't right now. Let me appoint them to represent you. I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent uh, Mr. Latsis, and then uh, she can have a quick conversation with you in just a moment. There was also an allegation of grand theft, third-degree motor vehicle. I find probable cause for that allegation set by the amount of $1,000. As to your out-of-county issues, you have uh, a ton of out-of-county issues, and that is... I'm not sure. Do we know what county that's out of? That's out of Miami-Dade County. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine warrants uh, out for you. Your bonds are set in the following amounts. Uh, as to warrant number one, it's 30000 As to warrant number two, it's 15000 
As to warrant number three, it is 5,000, I think. Is it 5,000? Yeah, 5,000. As to warrant number four, it's 30,000. As to warrant number five, it's 5,000. As to warrant six, seven, that's 1,000 each. Warrant number eight is 15,000. And warrant number nine is 30,000. I have no idea what that totals up to, but it's a lot. Can I, and, can I write it down, sir? Yeah, well, you're gonna get some paperwork. With that amount on there? Will he get his bond? Will he get his IA paperwork? They should get, if he bonds, yeah. They should get his paperwork. All right, you want me to go through it one more time? So I can try to write it. I can bond out here if they let me. I'll write it down. You've got bonds on all of your cases, but it's a lot. I can tell you this. Okay. Yeah. Madam, pretrial release is going to... Uh, $133,500. That would be like $10,000 ago. It's between you and the bondsman. And yep. that's all Miami. That's all Miami-Dade stuff. And Orange. Yeah, and our Orange oh, County right. cases. And I'll, on our Orange County cases, I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender. Can I ask you a question, sir? I may or may not be able to answer it. What's that's your question? No um, all of this is between like me and my girl. Right. No, I know. I just want to can yeah. I say this, please. I please. can't do a thing about I your Miami Dade cases. I, I understand that, sir. I'm trying to get down there. Can you oral R me on these cases? They're here. I, I want to go rectify this. I never did anything like this in my life, sir. This is real bad. And it's all because I mentally abused my girlfriend. I said some real bad things to her. And like real bad things. And I said I was going to leave. And she put all this on me, sir. Yeah. Like, I, I got text messages from the, I mean, that don't even matter. I, I was, the car is not stolen or not. I cannot, can you please borrow on me or do something so I can get to the, I'm not going nowhere. Right. I need to get down here so I can talk to these people, man. Please. Listen, as a human being, I understand where you're coming from. As a judge, I got a bunch of warrants from another judge out of Miami-Dade, and I'm not going to mess with those. Yo, I don't want you to mess with though. I want to go to Miami Dade so I can handle this with them. If you don't post bond, Miami Dade will come get you. But it's uh, yeah, after COVID this protocols, case is resolved, it might take they're some time. Come get me, right? They're not gonna come get me until the case is resolved. I'm not. I can't post bond. I'm, I'm, I gotta try to save all the money I can for this, sir. I understand. Can you please try to give me an ROR so I, I won't go. Don't give me ROR on these. Just on a driver license and, and a suspended, so I can go to Dade within the next couple days, sir. Man, I got a good at his job. I got all type of stuff going on good for me. I just got out of prison six months ago. I haven't been in any trouble, sir. All right, give me, give me just go. Give me just a sec. Let me re read your charging after. And then the officer that locked me up on a possession of a stolen motor vehicle, I got texts in the phone from my girl saying to take the car. He wouldn't even look for that. He wouldn't even look at it. All right, all right. Let me, let me read the charging after then. Yeah, based on, a review, based on a review of criminal history, I'm not going to be able to help you out on the Orange County bond. So you're bondable on these cases, and I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender. And I, sorry, yeah, so that's going to conclude our hearing. Sorry, Mr. Yes, Lazarus. Thanks. Thanks. All right, thanks. The court's going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender in 2020 CF 7488. I think they're probably already appointed on that case. Uh, there was a capious warrant for failing to appear for a competency hearing on January 25th. Judge that made that determination and had the best information more than I do uh, issued no bond. He's going to remain on no bond. And uh, if the PD's not previously appointed, they're appointed now. Oh, I didn't ask. Do you want uh, Do you want to waive 
Mr. Lopez, or would you like to uh, have him reset? Uh, we, we can wave, Your Honor. All Thank right. you. Thanks. Ms. Miller? Madam Pretrial Release Officer, I had another case on this one, 2021-CT-1415. Yes, that, Judge. Was that on your face sheet? Yes, Judge. It, the case number just hadn't populated yet into the system, so the last charge, the moving traffic violation... I see it. ...is associated with that case. I got it. Thanks. Ms. Miller, good afternoon. Ms. Miller, you have a number of issues before the court. Uh, the first being an allegation of driving while license suspended. I do find probable cause for that allegation in 2021 CT 1415. The bond in that case will be set in the amount of $500. In 2021, CF 2135, you have two allegations. One is possessing cocaine and one is possessing drug paraphernalia. I read the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for your allegation in that case. And I'll set bond the amount of $1,000 is to count one and $100 is to count two. I also note that you're out on bond on uh, 2020 CT 7766. It is alleged that you were driving while uh, without a valid driver's license while you were out on bond on the DUI case. I'm going to revoke your bond in that case. I'm going to set your bond in the amount of none. Your attorney will be notified. They'll get you in front of your trial judge to see whether bond is appropriate on that case. And as to all of the cases, I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. So you're going to retain, you're going to stay with us for a little while until uh, we sort out your DUI case. Thanks. Mr. Muhammad. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. Muhammad. Mr. Muhammad, you were uh, accused of two new law offenses in 2021 CF 2136 and 2021 MM 1260. Count uh, one in 2021 CF 2136 is possession of cannabis with intent to sell or deliver. Count two is possession of drug paraphernalia. Count one in 2021 MM 1260 is resisting an officer without violence. As to all of those counts, I read the charging affidavit. I do find a probable cause for your arrest and uh, will set bonds in the following amounts. Some possession of cannabis when it's sent to sell or deliver, set bond in the amount of $1,000, drug paraphernalia in the amount of $100. Resisting an officer without violence will be set in the amount of $500. I note that you're out on bond on uh, 2020 CF12826 court has probable cause to believe that you have committed a new felony and misdemeanor law offense while uh, out on bond. I'm going to revoke your bond in that case. Bond will be set at none, and I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you on all your cases. Thanks. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Can I, can I speak for, for one second? I've appointed you, Ms. Taylor. Uh, do you want to run that question by Ms. Taylor before you tell me in open court? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Mr. Muhammad is, is um, asking that I request the court to set a bond on his out on bond case. We understand that the court has discretion to revoke that bond. We're just asking um, for a discretionary new bond. Mr. Muhammad's informed me that he does have a full-time job and is willing to undergo whatever additional conditions of release that the court finds, finds appropriate. Mr. Muhammad, that's a reasonable request. And Ms. Taylor's done a good job of making it on your uh, behalf. Uh, I'm going to deny that request. There were allegations involving a firearm. There's new allegations of uh, 
possession of uh, drugs and resisting an officer without violence. So uh, you'll remain on no bond. Your attorney on that case can get you in front of your trial judge and maybe they'll reconsider. I don't know. Your Honor, how, 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 how long am I not going to have a bond for it? Until, uh, until your trial judge gets around to uh, handling the uh, allegations involving the firearm. Or your attorney in that case requests a bond and the uh, court in that case has some time to hear it. Meaning, meaning so my attorney comes and, and tries to get me out. Yeah, Ms. Taylor will have that discussion with you. But yeah, your attorney in that case will be notified that you're on no bond and will probably petition the court to reconsider that decision. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll let them know you're stuck here. Nope. Do we want to go back to Osceola now? I need to return to uh, Osceola County real quick. I don't know how to fire that up again. Yeah. There's nobody there. Yeah, I was just doing on the record. Okay. <laughs> Court's been made aware of a problem as to one of the Osceola County uh, initial appearance. Mr. Shinooski in 2020 CT 823 was on a diversion tier one contract for DUI. It is alleged that Mr. Shinooski has picked up a new uh, DUI while uh, participating in the diversion program. Mr. Shinooski is on some form of release to participate in the diversion program in his case 2020 CT 823, be it pretrial release or be it uh, ROR. Um, that release is revoked and the new bond is set at none. Court finds Mr. Shinooski to be a danger to the community based on a second allegation of driving under the influence while being released on a form of release in the pretrial diversion program for the exact same offense. That will conclude this hearing. I think I was at up to Mr. Neal. He refused? Okay. Well, Mr. Neal can see the uh, IA judge tomorrow. It's a reset for tomorrow? Yep. Right. Ronaldo Filbert. Good afternoon, Mr. Filbert. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Mr. Filbert, uh, you are accused of two counts count one is carjacking with a firearm count two is aggravated assault with a firearm i'll appoint the office of the public defender to represent your interests i have read the charging affidavit i do find probable cause for the allegations case uh, your first count is a crime that is punishable uh, by a maximum sentence of life in prison as such uh, you're you're going to get no bond today you'll remain on no bond as to that count as to the aggravated assault with a firearm your bond will be set in the amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars special condition of any bond will be you're to have no contact with the alleged victim you're not to return to the scene where this occurred you are to possess no weapons or firearms as a condition of any bond 
and I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. No bond and $7,500 is to count to you. No contact, no return, no yeah. weapons. I got all the other cases. I just right. get the Your attorney will be out to talk to you about what your options are. Thank you. Judges, so is the court making a finding as to proof evidence presumption great? It's not required at IA, and that will be a determination for uh, the trial judge okay. at an evidentiary hearing. Thanks. Is this private counsel? Ben Smith. Yeah, he'll be entitled to an Arthur hearing once once it's filed in front of the child. Um, you got the files. <laughs> What's that? You have the files. Yeah. It's probably the attorney. Oh. I don't know if you want me to pull it or it's so watching. Thank you. You Mr. Smith? Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, uh, you were arrested and accused of uh, the following charges, fleeing or attempting to elude, lights and sirens activated, possession of cannabis, possession of cannabis with, with intent to sell or deliver, possession of drug paraphernalia, and resisting an officer without violence. Um, I have reviewed the charging document. I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interest. I find probable cause as to all of those counts. Bonding count one be set in the amount of $3,500, count two and three in the amount of $1,000 each, uh, counts four and five in the amount of $150 each. You're also out uh, on, uh, there's an out of county on view violation. Uh, you'll be uh, placed on no bond on an allegation that there's probable cause to believe you violated probation with this new law offense in 2018, 2737 out of Seminole County. Um, we will let Seminole County know that you're here with us uh, and uh, I will inquire as to that judge as to whether they wish to consider a bond based on the allegations. I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you in both cases. Thanks. Corrections, may I have Mr. Jacob Watkins next? Uh, after after this young lady, could I have Jacob Watkins? Thank you. All right. May I have your name, please? Um, Faith Warrington. Thank you, Ms. Warrington. Ms. Warrington, you were arrested based on an allegation of battery on a law enforcement officer and battery. I took a look at the charging affidavit. Uh, I do find probable cause for both of the allegations. Bond in count one is going to be set in the amount of $1,000 as to count two in the amount of $500. Uh, I noted that there was a local PTR violation, but I didn't see it in the packet. Do we have yes, any information on that? There's a detainer uh, for a local warrant to be served. It just hasn't been served yet, Judge. Does so I have a bond? Uh, $2,000, Your Honor. How much? $2,000. We've also got a warrant for a violation of pretrial release. It's bondable with a $2,000 bond. So you got bonds on all of your charges, and I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent so you. So they would just be all put together for the bond? Yeah, you've got uh, $2,000 on the uh, violation of pretrial release, and $1,000 as to count one and 500 is to count two on the new offense. Yes, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, is that a five? Oh, excuse me. No, that wasn't. Yeah, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Sorry. Okay. That was my own note. There you go. Okay. I'll make it clear. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Kevin Moransky representing Mr. Watkins. Mr. Moransky, is that correct? Moransky, yes, sir. I right, entered a uh, notice of appearance today, so I don't know if it's in the system yet. All right. Thank you. Mr. Moransky, your client, uh, Mr. Watkins, is present. Uh, he has a number of issues uh, with the court today. First is uh, a new law offense in 2021-8918. has three allegations. Count one is DUI. 
driving uh, under the influence. Count two is refusal to submit to a DUI test. And count three is driving while license revoked as a habitual traffic offender. I'm sorry, a, a driving while license revoked. I'm not sure if it's as a habitual traffic offender. Your Honor, just to uh, be clear on that case number, uh, the case numbers I have are 21 CT, um, 14, 12, 13, and 14. Yeah, we have uh, we have arrest numbers I probably. Understand. I don't think they've been assigned case numbers. You're correct. 2021 CT 1412, 2021 1413, 2021 CT 1414. I find probable cause for those allegations. As to the uh, DUI, the court's going to uh, set bond in the amount of $2,500. As to the refusal to submit to a DUI test, the court's going to set bond in the amount of $2,500. As to driving while license revoked, the court's going to set bond in the amount of $1,000. I'll note that uh, he is also out on bond on a DUI with a prior conviction and a, another refusal to submit to a DUI test in 2020 CT 5704 and 2020 CT 5441. Uh, argument, counsel? Uh, Your Honor, um, yes, that is, that is correct. He is out on bond, on surety bond, on rail bond, but he has a surety bond in both of those matters that he's posted. He has retained private counsel who is present today. I'm representing him on those matters as well. He has significant ties to the community. He works 40 hours a week approximately. His family lives in the community, um, and he just wants to get all of this behind him. All right, thank you. Um, based on the allegations contained within the new charging affidavit, I, I do find uh, Mr. Watkins could be a danger to society. He uh, has continued to drive while being alleged to have been impaired. Uh, he has committed a new law offense with the same allegations while out on bond on two separate uh, cases and uh, the court is going to revoke his bond in those cases set bond in the amount of none and you can petition the trial judge to uh, uh, reevaluate that decision okay thank you your honor thank you that's all i have before the court may i be excused yes thank you arthur williams Good afternoon, Mr. Williams. Good afternoon. Mr. Williams, uh, you were arrested based on an Ash County <coughs> warrant, and then you have a new law offense with us. Uh, that new law offense is 2021 CF 2127, alleges one count of possessing cocaine. I do find probable cause for that allegation. I'll set you a bond in the amount of $1,000, and I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Your out of county warrant's out of Highlands County. It's a $6,000 purge for child support, it looks like. So you are purgeable on that offense, uh, but there is a $6,000 purge amount. Otherwise, Highlands County will be uh, informed that you are here with us in the uh, Orange County Jail, and uh, if they give us some kind of discretion, we can readdress that case. I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Thanks. This is Ben Smith. I Case doesn't go away. It's an active case. It's 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 abated. Tomorrow in Osceola County for IA. Guess who's the IA judge? Is? To be recalled tomorrow. No, I don't want him to bond out. So it's not my case, but whosoever case it is, I'll let him know. Do you want to change this? 
afternoon until you see him tomorrow? Or do you want me to put in a new order, hold him until tomorrow? Gotcha. Hold and then put that case number. Okay. Hold without bond on that case number. On this one? On the 823 that mm -hmm. we found? Okay. You, Mr. Hernandez Rivera? Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Hernandez Rivera, you were arrested based on an allegation of no valid driver's license and failing to appear in another case, 2016 CT 2943. As to the no valid driver's license, um, is that our case? Yeah, that was in 21 CT 1411. I do find probable cause for that allegation. I'll set bond the amount of $500 as to that case. There's also a warrant for you for failing to appear for a violation of probation allegation in 2016 CT 2943. Warrant was issued January 31st, 2017. Looking at your criminal history, you have it is alleged that you have five failures to appear. I'm going to set a bond in, in uh, 2016 CT 2943 bond set in the amount of $1,500. And I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender on that case as well. You're bondable on both your cases, but if you miss court again, they're just going to go arrest you again. So make sure you find out when you have court. Yes, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Chung? Thank you. The court will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent Mr. Chung's interest 2021 MM 107. Find probable cause for the allegations. Uh, Ms. Taylor, do you wish to waive or have uh, Mr. Chung reset? Um, do we know if this is something that the state would make an offer on at IA? Today. Okay, then I, I'd ask for him to be reset. We'll reset uh, Mr. Chung's case and thank you. The IA judge. Terrell Cook. Welcome, Court will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent Mr. Cook's interest in his new law offense in 2021 MM108. Ms. Taylor? I'd ask for this to be reset, Your Honor. All right. We'll reset Mr. Cook to tomorrow. My judge is going to love me. Para Martinez. I uh, don't know if I have an inmate number for you. I got a case number. Sorry, uh, Madam Corrections Officer, I found it. I have it. 
bonded, Your Honor. Bonded, thank you. Mr. Snyder. Good afternoon, Mr. Snyder. Mr. Snyder, you were arrested based on an allegation of soliciting without a permit. Took a look at the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for your allegation. Bond is titled to a bond in the amount of $250. I note 19 prior misdemeanors. Your Honor, the state's inclined to make an offer today. Um, if Your Honor would like to. What's the offer of resolution? Adjudication and a $200 fine. Credit time served. Ms. Taylor, uh, I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent Mr. Snyder's interests. Do you want to have a discussion with what he wants to do? Sure. i kind of uncomfortable with the fine, given that he was panhandling. Um, we'll certainly discuss it. Understood. Yeah, it seems to be a continuing issue for Mr. Snyder, uh, based on the number of violations of county ordinances that I see on his criminal history. Absolutely. I'd like to resolve it, Your Honor. All right. Thanks. All right. Can we hold on to uh, Mr. Snyder while he goes over the paperwork, or does he get any paperwork, or I just go through his trial rights? Okay. Mr. Snyder, uh, we're going to place you on the road. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Mr. Snyder, you put your hand down. Mr. Snyder, uh, your attorney has represented to the court that you wish to plead no contest to violating County Ordinance 21-263, which is panhandling without a permit. Is that what you wish to do? Yes. You understand you have a right to have a jury trial as to that allegation at the jury trial of the state of Florida would have to prove to a jury beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt you committed the offense that you were charged with. At that trial, your attorney would be with you, would cross-examine witnesses and examine evidence against you. Is it a non-jury trial? Uh, I believe so, Your Honor. Could be either. I think he's entitled to a jury trial. At that trial, your attorney would be with you, would cross-examine witnesses and examine evidence against you. You could have presented your own witnesses and evidence if your witnesses had not wanted to come to court. You could have asked me to make them come to court with a subpoena. You could have testified or remained silent. Your jury would have been instructed not to consider your decision to remain silent in any way in rendering a verdict. You would have had a right to have the trial recorded and appeal any error that occurred in that process. You understand you've given up all your trial rights because if the court accepts this resolution, I'm going to go along with an adjudication Time served, two hundred dollar fine, and we're not going to be having a trial in this matter. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Is anyone forcing you or pressuring you into making this decision? No. Anyone made you any promises other than what uh, has been represented by your attorney? No. Has anyone made you any promises at all? No. Under the influence of any alcohol, drugs, or mental issues that cause you not to understand the decision that you're making? Nope. You understand if you're not a United States citizen, entry this plea would subject you to deportation. I can't hear your response. Yes. And if you ever before have been convicted of a sexually violent or sexually motivated offense, entry of this plea could subject you to involuntary civil commitment. Do you understand that? Yes. Defense, are you stipulating to a factual basis for purposes of the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Except that stipulation finds Mr. Snyder appears to be alert and intelligent. He's had an opportunity to think about the decision and discuss it with his attorney. Satisfied with Mr. Ms. Taylor's help in her short time representing you? Yes. You've indicated to me no one's forced you or pressured you to make this decision. You do so of your own free will. The court will adjudicate you guilty of soliciting without a permit a violation of county ordinance 21.263. Uh, you are sentenced to a $250 fine. How long do you need to pay that off? Oh, six months. Or, oh. Sorry? Six months? Or I'll give you a year. All right. You can make payments to the clerk of the court. Are you doing the $250 fine plus the court cost? Yeah. Okay. There's going to be some court costs to get added on. Do we know what those are? The court costs are 223. 223. Yeah. Court costs are going to be $223 for a uh, total of $473. You'll get credit for the time that you have already served in jail, which is how long? Two days. I believe it's two days. Mr. Schneider, when were you arrested? Yesterday is two days, I think it is. On yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, yeah. I think so, two days. Sentence will be two days with credit for the two days that you've already served, plus that fine and 
Court costs, you have 30 days from today's date to appeal the judgment and sentence. If you wish to do so, you must do it in writing. Can't afford an attorney, won't be appointed for you. Make little payments to the clerk of the court. If you don't pay and they don't hear from you, they could suspend your driving privileges. You understand? Mm -hmm. Please stop panhandling without a permit. Thank you. Mitchell Struther. Mental health. Mental health. Of course, going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent Mr. Struther's interests in 2021 MM 1253. Ms. Taylor, would you like uh, him reset or would you like to uh, waive his appearance? Reset, Your Honor. All right, we will reset Mr. Struther for the IA judge tomorrow. Brennan White. Good afternoon, Mr. White. Mr. White, you were arrested based on an allegation of trespass on a property after a warning. Let's see what was going on with you. You were at, you're at the uh, 5196 Lescott Lane address. I don't have any face sheet on Mr. White. Judge, can I give you my copy? Yes, please. That one. Thank you. Okay. Mr. White, you're not going to qualify for uh, pretrial life release and based on some of the uh, prior criminal history. The court's going to set bond in your case in the amount of $250. And as a condition of bond, you are not to return to 5196 Lescott Lane. I will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Your Honor, Mr. White would be interested in resolving the case if that's possible this morning. State, is there an offer on uh, Mr. White's case? Yes, Your Honor, one moment. Was he trespassing? It looks like he's trespassing on a private residence. Yep. I would. I don't feel comfortable making an offer before talking to the victim. All right. The, it looks like a private residence, and the victim uh, issued a trespass warning. I think Mr. White came back. Um, I wouldn't make any promises to what the resolution would be. Do so you want to enter a plea to the court, or? Judge, my understanding, uh, based on on a new policy um, that's come out recently, that the state may be inclined to agree to ROR, given that this is a nonviolent offense. Is the state perhaps familiar with that policy? Can I see the uh, face sheet again, Madam Pretrial yes, Release Officer? And just for the record, what I'm uh, referring to would be the SA09 Community Health and Safety Plan that I believe went into effect this past week. Um, and just for the record, I'm referring to um, 
the section of implementation. Section one, first appearance, when the accused does not pose a danger to the community or risk of flight and is not charged with a dangerous crime as defined in Florida Statute 907.0414A, the assistant state attorney shall request condition consistent with Florida statutes that the court release the arrested on their own recognizance on their own recognizance and other or other non-monetary conditions of release that are available. Does he qualify for PTR? Does not. All right, doesn't appear that there's uh, a recommendation at this time from the state. I can let uh, uh, Ms. Taylor, obviously astute to make the request. Uh, Mr. White has a recent disorderly in public, but he has past Florida convictions for escape or attempted to escape allegations of violence, uh, a out of state criminal history in Georgia that disqualify him. Is he employed? Yes, sir. Uh, I work for Toyota. I, got, I get paid good money. Uh, I've been there almost now about six months. I do um, certified mechanic. I just don't want to lose my job. Do you got a place to stay? Yes, sir. Where's that? On um, Powell, North Powell Avenue. I just got the place. Do you have any reason to be anywhere near the address where no, you came sir. into contact no, with law no, enforcement? No reason at all. I'm on the way on, on the other side of the land. Though. I just don't want to lose my job. I've been doing so good. All right. You're working full time? Yes, sir. Full time. I love it. I've set your bond the amount of $250. Can you make bond? Yes, sir. I just ain't got it. I just, I just, I just don't have it right now. I'm the only person down here. I have no family here. Judge, the, the state's not going to object to ROR. I just don't want to lose my job. you have a bank account, Mr. White? No, sir. I just, I'm just getting myself back to status right now. I just got a, I don't own a relationship. Um, my marriage, it took everything. And I'm, I'm rebuilding myself right now by speed. How long have you been with Toyota of Orlando? Oh, now about six months now. I just got my probation period and everything. Do they pay in cash? How do they pay you? No, sir. They pay me on um, check, but I just kept my check because I still paying I owe the bank to my past relationship. And I'm paying off. I'm paying off things right now. If I, if I get a bank account right now, they'll snatch everything out their account. But right now, I'm doing so good. I just don't want to lose my job. Whatever condition you give me, I have to do. I, I have to do. I can't give you any conditions if I release you on pre on ROR. So, I'll lower your bond to hundred dollars plus the condition that you not return to that. Uh, to that location. I, I don't know if it, you got anybody on the outside that can. No, sir. All, everybody in Georgia. Yeah, I can't. I'm not going to release you on ROR with your, with your prior history with no restrictions. You can't go back to that place. So it's a hundred dollars, and the PD is appointed. Your Honor, if I may. Um, the defendant was interviewed um, prior to initial appearance. The charge is eligible for pretrial release if the court feels that that is appropriate. Um, perhaps um, Mr. White could be re-interviewed to see if we could get some clear information um, because he did indicate to us that he had been working for six years. So I'd be interested to maybe get some clear information from Mr. White. It would be the court's preference that he be released pretrial release uh, with the condition that he not return to that property if he qualifies. So, Mr. White, PTR, maybe you'll take a second look at you and uh, consider you for pretrial release if you'll be candid with them, give them the information that they need, okay? Yes, sir. Or it'll be $100, no return. Thanks. Don't do that, sir. Sorry. No. 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 $100 or pretrial release. Oh, yeah. no. Ms. Osceola, do you? Yeah. Yep. Case be set for it. So 
be held without bond until I can see them. Just, just tell them what they need to do. See, I'll see them. So, you want me to do another order from them? See, Yeah. Tell you what. <laughs> Just keep that language. They're either going to release them or they're not. I mean, I told them not to. They release them. Okay. So I'm okay. not going to keep going back and forth with, with the language. Just say okay. that's the order of the court. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. Wright? Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. Mr. Wright, you were arrested based on an allegation in 2021 MM1256 with two counts, resisting an officer without violence and open carrying of a weapons or firearms for the incident alleged to have happened there at the Neiman Marcus. I read the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for your arrest. The court will appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent your interests. Your bond in count one is going to be set in the amount of $500. As to count two in the amount of $500, you're not to return to the Millennium Mall or the parking lot. And as a condition of your bond, you're not to possess any weapons or firearms. Thanks. William Capris or Caparis. Is it pronounced Caparis? Good afternoon. Can you tell me your name, sir? William Caparis. Mr. Caparis, you were arrested based on an out of county warrant out of Seminole County. That's on case number 21256 CFA. Looks like a uh, possession of methamphetamine allegation. There was a bond attached to that uh, warrant. The bond is in the amount of $3,000. Thank you. Nikki Dorn. Yeah, go on. You're good. Thank you. Kia Gibson. Thanks. I'm going to have to take a uh, brief recess, so uh, if, can you give me five minutes and then uh, we'll be off the record. Thanks. Sometimes, 
sometimes when I come in here, it's like something about the air. It's just like it just starts running like a faucet. Yeah. And it looks freaking terrible because I'm up here like. <laughs> All right, Kia Gibson uh, apparently uh, is hospitalized. We're going to reset within 24 hours. Oh, really? Or 24 hours. Rhett Hopkins. He's on the Thank you. Court's going to appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent Mr. Hopkins' interests in 2019. No, those are all out of county. 
I'm not going to appoint the officer of the public defender on the out of county warrants. He has uh, out of county warrants set at none. I guess we'll reset. He was rolled from yesterday. Can I just? Can I just? Can I set him for a, a hearing when he's cleared medically? He's got out of county warrants set at none. He's going to remain on no bond, and we'll notify his out of county folks that he's here with us. Do you want to the PD? Will they take him? Will you take an out of county warrant if he's in medical and can't be seen? Um, yes, we're actually, I guess, opening these cases and assigning them because of the. Supreme Court order appointing yeah. us temporarily, so that'd be fine. Okay, I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender on uh, his uh, Broward County uh, no bond warrants just to make sure he's got a voice while he's here with us in, in the jail. And uh, based on that appointment, will you waive? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thanks. James Stevens. Good afternoon, Mr. Steven. Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Stevens is with us on uh, two cases. That's 2021-MM1233. Uh, has an allegation of two counts. Count one is trespass on property after warning. Count two is resisting an officer without violence. I read the charging affidavit. I do find probable cause for the uh, arrest. His bonds, he qualifies for pretrial release based on his risk assessment. He'll be released on uh, pretrial release with the condition that he not return to. Is that Disney property? Yes, sir. Do you have any personal belongings there at Disney? No, sir. All right. I didn't even make it to pass the scanners. I didn't, I, make it, I didn't even make it on the property. I understand. All right, well, I'm releasing you pre-trial release. Uh, they will uh, get some information from you. You should be released today. And uh, I'll appoint the Office of the Public Defender to represent you. Your Honor. Yes. Um, the defendant does qualify for pre-trial release. However, he lives out of state. Okay. And will need court permission to leave the state. Are you going back home? I would like to, sir. Oh. Um, my, I'm, I don't want to say anything else. I, I don't blame you. My, my, my bail, no, I've, since I've been here, I've, I've, anytime I've said anything, it's pretty much asking for trouble. <laughs> so Understood. I've been All assaulted right. and everything else. Well, I'm going to release you on to the pretrial release. But, um, I, had, I, I originally was given a bail for $1,100, and my wife, came up here and paid my bail, the full amount. To the, she paid the bail amount at okay. the court. But they, 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 they denied me my bail release and they denied me coming here yesterday. Okay. Well, you're here before the court now. I'm ordering that you be released on pretrial release. You'll be released today. Yeah. And I, I give also you have cancer and they've been denying me medical What's treatment. Oh, I'm gonna no. give you permission to go, go home uh, and yes, leave sir, the state. Thank you so much. All right, good luck to you. Bless you. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Correction Officer. All right. Why is he restricted? What's that? Uh, I was trying to bring Mr. Vaughn back so he could resolve his case with us today. He had expressed an interest yesterday in resolving his case. Um, I'm not bringing him to court if he's medically restricted, so perhaps they can uh, get him in get him to regular court. I understand, Your Honor. Right. Thank you. Sorry about that. So where do you want to, um, you want to stay his bond? Yeah, we'll stay his bond. I, I, we accomplished IA yesterday. 
uh, on his. So I was bringing him back to see if he wanted to resolve his case, but that's not going to work out. Gregory Foster. Good afternoon, Mr. Foster. Mr. Foster, you have two issues with us. That is uh, 2021 MM1255, first count of possessing cannabis under 20 grams, second count of possessing drug paraphernalia. I find probable cause. I'm going to set bond in uh, count one the amount of $250 and count two in the amount of $100. Unfortunately, you've got some out-of-county stuff as well. The out-of-county stuff uh, is... I'm sorry, it's a violation of probation allegation out of another county. Is, there an, is that pursuant to a warrant or is this an on view? The um, defendant is on probation in Orange County and I believe in Seminole. Let me verify that judge. Yeah. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Um, in Orange and Lake County and the arresting officer um, violated him on his Orange County probation as well as his Lake County probation. Okay. All right, there's been an on view violation. Uh, I suspect that's a uh, violent felony offender of special concern based on the allegations. So um, you're not gonna be granted a bond in, in uh, your violation of probation on view warrants. And your attorney will be appointed to represent you on the Orange County violation of probation as well as your new law offense and the Lake County violation is currently no bond as well. So we'll let Lake County know you're with us and uh, your attorney is aware of the Orange County violation and your new law offense. Thanks. Your Honor, would the court be willing to ROR on the cannabis and drug paraphernalia charges um, given the nonviolent nature? And I don't even think the state's prosecuting cannabis anymore in addition to the policy that I noted for the record on the previous case? The court finds a new law offense. I'll, I'll ROR them on the uh, possession of cannabis, possession of drug paraphernalia allegations, but there's still an on view violation to believe he's violated his probation and uh, he's not entitled to bond on those cases. The bond will be set at none. Understood, Your Honor. Thank Thanks. you. Your Honor, the defendant has reporting requirements that he needs to be advised Listen. of on the record. Thank you. Mr. Foster, you know that you've got reporting requirements. If you happen to bond out, you know that you have to report, correct? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm on point with everything. I'm kind of confused. I'm very confused. I asked a question, you know, not about the case. Right. Uh, as you read, and she also read, you know, it's the cannabis. Right. But I am a medical patient, and I, I take care of that every month. Yep. You know, so I would never put myself in a situation knowing my severities on my charges and what I've been going through. Right. I'm also getting married couple of months. As you can see, I'm a, a probation offender, sex offender, so it's like everything that I've been doing since I've been out is to stay on point and to stay free. Understood. But now me sitting in here is going to jeopardize all that and I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to lose my job. Right. You know, I got things I really need to take care of. Now, I don't know what the officer was going through that day, but I corroborated. I gave you everything you needed and I showed facts. My wife came and did the same thing that my card is at. Right. Well, now you're represented by an attorney that can deal directly with the state attorney and give them that information. Yes, I don't sir. know whether they'll decide to find, uh, to uh, issue a warrant based on a willful and material violation or whether they won't. That's going to be the state's decision. I don't, I don't get to participate in that decision at all. What I have done is ROR you on the new law offense. Um, it is apparent that uh, there is a probable cause for a new law offense. Until that gets sorted out, I can't give you a bond based on the allegations that you're on probation because they qualify as a violent felony offender special concern. So, so what, what does that leave me? What does what mean? I'm saying, no, what does it leave me? Am, am I staying in jail? Am You'll I stay in jail trained? on the violation of probations. Yes, sir. You're released as to the new law offense. Your attorney will be notified to start working with the state on the allegations of violation of probation to see whether they're going to 
prosecute a violation or not. If they're not, then you you know then uh, you should be uh, released back to probation. But I can't make that decision for them. Correct. <coughs> now, uh, am I being transferred to Lake County because that's what my probation is? And if uh, so, is that in between the? You got probations in two counties, so I don't know how that's going to work. And that's a question that's probably more well suited for your attorney. I, I don't have any reason to disbelieve you, and uh, I wish you good luck in sorting this out. Seems like you. I, I just really hope y'all. I've been doing everything since I've been out of right. Now. Please help me get that home, my family. I don't want to lose them. I gave y'all. I done did enough time. I understand. I hear you. My parents are behind me. I'm trying to get forward. The only way I can do that is by y'all keeping me in society. He's showing that. That my characteristics show. I hear you, and I can't solve all those problems today. All I can do is ROR you on that new charge, and then uh, get, wish you good luck. All right. All right, Cornelius Rodas, his mental health. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, thank you. I'll point the Office of the Public Defender in 2021, MO245. Ms. Taylor? Um, Judge, if memory serves, and the clerk may be able to help me, um, I think Mr. Brodus is is long time incompetent to proceed um obviously this is this is a new offense um mr brodus has an astounding 229 misdemeanor offenses yes your honor um at this point i, I guess i would i would just ask for a reset and hopefully the next maybe the judge. ia is more familiar with mr brodus than i am uh, i, I so. suspect so <laughs> So we'll set, uh, we'll reset Mr. Brodus's case at the public defender's request. They're appointed and uh, they'll be seen by the IA judge tomorrow. Mr. Durant, you Mr. Durant? Good afternoon, Mr. Durant. Mr. Durant was uh, arrested based on a city ordinance of disorderly conduct and 43.06 state uh, office of the state attorney have an offer of resolution for Mr. Durant. Yes, your honor. One moment. the offer to resolve it would be an adjudication and a $200 fine with credit time served. Okay. Your Honor, if I could just have a moment to speak with Mr. Durant. Sure. Based on Mr. Durant's uh, lack of criminal history, I, I'm a little hesitant to um, advise him to plead to something that's going to result in, a, in an adjudication on a misdemeanor. Um, I'd just be inclined to ask for ROR at this point. I'll PTR him if he'll talk to PTR, if he qualifies. Doesn't look like he's got any criminal history. He refused to talk to pretrial release. Correct, Judge. He declined to speak with us. And for the record, um, he has no history based off of the name and date of birth that he provided. He has not been positively identified at this point. I'm not going to ROR him. So uh, I will grant him a bond in the amount of $150 or pretrial release. As a condition of bond or pretrial release, he's not to go back to the Wawa. Understood, Your Honor. And I understand the court's position. I would just again put on the record that based on the state attorney's new policy i believe they should be advocating for ror your honor um, i just want to put I, on the record that i do not object to ror okay all right uh based on the fact that mr durant has been uh um has refused to talk to our pretrial release folks i will consider non-monetary release but uh, uh the court needs some additional information to make that determination if he chooses to talk to Pre-trial release, they can consider him for pre-trial release, which is non-monetary release. 
Thanks. Understood, Your Honor. Thank you. So, you want to keep the 150 or PTR? No return, correct, Judge? No return to Walla. Thank you, Your Honor. That was the last of the cases that I had on my docket. Anybody have any unresolved matters? Taylor, Ms. Guadalupe, thank you for your professionalism and your thank hard you. work today. Thank you, court reporting. Thank you, Madam Clerk, Madam Pretrial Release Officer. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Madam Corrections Officer. You're welcome. I will see you in 60 months. <laughs> yep.